And to initially look at that, we chose a highly conserved signaling system, uh, which I'm sure is familiar to most of you, namely the MAP kinase cascades. As you recall, the MAP kinase cascades uh, are highly conserved from yeast to humans. They consist of three kinases in sequence, a MAP kinase, a MAP kinase kinase, and a MAP triple kinase. The MAP kinases in turns are in several families, such as the ERKs, the junks, and the P38 MAP kinases. There are at least a dozen or so kinases at every level uh, of this uh, cascade. So there's enormous complexity. Many different types of G-protein coupled receptors uh, activate these pathways, as do all sorts of other growth factor receptors, cytokines, etc. And of course, the classical uh, pathways that have been worked out involve phosphorylation by the MAP kinases of transcription factors leading to their activation, translocation to the nucleus, and regulation of all manner of transcriptional pro programs shown here. Now, a conundrum during the 90s, was, uh, which was investigated, was the question of how, with all this complexity, with all these welter of enzymes, dozens of enzymes, how did the cell ever organize any specific pathway, such as, for example, RAF, MEC, ERK1? Uh, how did it ever organize such a pathway with any fidelity or reproducibility? And this led to the idea that there might be scaffolding proteins, uh, which would bind together several members of a particular uh, pathway. And in yeast, a molecule, sterile 5, was discovered, which appeared to function in this way. We, in fact, were able to demonstrate that beta arrestins, particular beta arrestin 2, was able to serve as a scaffold for several of these MAP kinase pathways. For example, it was able to, uh, it was able to scaffold a... Uh, a RAF, MEC, ERK pathway, and an ASK, uh, MKK4, uh, Junk3 pathway. So it was able to serve as a scaffold for such pathways.